Hello and welcome to Zoo to You. My name is Rena and I'm an educator at Zoo Boise. For this Zoo to You, we're inviting you to participate in activity that has something to do with this episode's featured animal. You'll be drawing a mystery animal and we'll need a few pieces of paper and a pencil, crayons, colored pencils, or markers. We'll pause for a moment so you can have time to gather those materials. For this activity, we will provide you with one clue at a time about the animal's features. You draw the features as described. For each feature you draw, you can pause the video so you have plenty of time to draw the feature to your satisfaction. And when you're finished drawing one feature, start the video again for another clue. Ready? Here we go. The first clue, draw an oval shape for the body with the oval being the longest from left to right. The second clue, to one side of the oval body, add two short legs with three toes on each foot. The third clue, to the other side of the oval body, add a short, wide neck. Fourth clue, add an oval-shaped head to the neck. Fifth clue, add a long, curved, pointed beak to the head. The sixth clue, on top of the beak, add any shape that you like. A square, a rectangle, a triangle, curved upside down U. The seventh clue, underneath the beak, draw a bag or sack. The eighth clue, add eyes to the side of the head and give those eyes some long eyelashes. The ninth clue, add wings and feathers to the body. The final clue, add some color. These animals are usually covered in black, gray, or white colors with some parts of the body, usually around the head and neck, in colors such as red, blue, orange, or yellow. You're all finished. Do you have any idea what this animal might be? If you mentioned toucan, you were very close. The animal you drew was a type of bird called a hornbill. Features of the hornbill that you drew are called adaptations or tools that the birds use to survive. Let's take a closer look at hornbill adaptations and see how they compare to some of your adaptations. Zoo Boise is home to several species or types of hornbills. Southern ground hornbill named Google and Tugel, silvery cheeked hornbill named Lena, and trumpeter hornbill Zuberi. Hornbills live in mostly forested habitats of Africa and Asia. The hornbills at Zoo Boise are found in Africa. You probably already know that feathers are a great adaptation for flying, for keeping warm, staying dry, and camouflage for hiding in the tree shadows. Short, stocky legs and three-toed feet are perfect for walking on the ground or perching on a tree branch. There are a few adaptations that hornbills have, particularly around their head, that are somewhat unique to hornbills. Let's take a look. Hornbills are omnivorous, which means they eat a variety of animals and plants, including insects, worms, centipedes, snails, fruit, and seeds. Gathering up food is how a hornbill's long curved beak is so useful. Most hornbills live in the trees, and these hornbills tend to eat more fruit, and some of the nice ripe fruit could be at the very outer tip of a branch. Imagine you were climbing out to the edge of a branch. What would happen? Would you be able to stay seated on the branch? Probably not, because your weight would cause the branch to bend and you would fall. The long beak makes it much easier for the hornbill to sit on the sturdy part of the branch while reaching out to the branch edge and pluck off the delicious fruit. No falling. Southern ground hornbills, as you probably guessed from their name, spend most of the time on the ground. Let's see what you might look like if you were a hornbill. If you were a ground hornbill, where would you look to find a meal? Perhaps dig into the ground, peek under the grass, or in the bushes? Lucky for you, you have a long, strong pointed beak that can easily poke and drill into the soil for worms, pluck insects out of the grasses and bushes. Their strong neck and beak can also act very quickly, enough to capture prey such as mice or hares and poke through large snails or tortoise shells. What tools would you need to dig into the ground? Pull fruits off trees, capture a mouse, or break open shells? Hornbills only need one, their beak. Remember the shapes you drew on the top of the hornbill beak? The top feature is called a cask, and biologists think that the cask has something to do with how hornbills communicate or talk to each other. 
The cask is made of bone that creates a honeycomb structure inside. So while the cask looks like it might be heavy, it's actually very lightweight, which is useful if you need to fly away. Hornbills travel in groups and rely on their group members in finding food and keeping an eye out for danger. Sometimes hornbills may become separated from each other. To find each other, hornbills will call to each other by making loud noises that can be heard for long distances through the trees or from the ground. Hornbills that live in the trees create sort of a honking or trumpet sound. It's thought that the cask works like a megaphone, amplifying or making the hornbill sounds louder and better able to travel long distances to reach those hornbill friends that are far away. What tools can you use to talk to your friends or family when they are far away? Ground hornbills have a cask as well as colorful sacs underneath their beak by their throat that also aid in communication. Check out this wonderful sound from Zoo Boise's Southern Ground Hornbill. That type of call is called a booming. Try to make a booming sound yourself, either using your own voice or another instrument. A group of hornbills will boom to let other hornbill groups know where their territory or home is located. And that booming can be heard nearly two miles away. Next time you're in a car or taking a hike, mark a two mile distance to get an idea of how far a ground hornbill boom can travel. Hornbills also have a special talent for using their beak to toss food from the tip of their beak to the back of their throat. Watch this. Test your skills against a hornbill. Try tossing a small ball into a small bucket or cup several times. How many tries did it take before you actually made a basket? Finally, take a look at the eyes you drew for your mystery animal. Remember those eyelashes? Wait, birds have eyelashes? Many birds have eyelashes, but a hornbill's eyelashes are particularly long. Hornbill eyelashes are not hair, but actually specialized feathers. And what purpose do you think these long eyelashes serve? Take a moment to think of what your eyelashes might do for you. If you're outside on a sunny day or a windy day, your eyelashes help to shade your eyes from the bright sun and work to keep dust and other debris out of your eye. Eyelashes are eye protection for both you and the hornbills. I hope you will agree that hornbills have several amazing survival tools just on their heads. Next time you're at Zoo Boise, check out the hornbills or watch the birds in your backyard. Observe how they use their beaks. Can you see their eyelashes? What sounds are they making? Figure out a tool that you could use to do the same thing. Thanks for joining us for another Zoo to You, and we'll see you next time.